A 60-year-old man comes in due to swelling in his ankles. On exam, it is noted that JVP, jugular venous pressure, is elevated at 11. There is a pan-systolic murmur at the left sternal border. What is the diagnosis? A. Mitral stenosis. B. Pulmonic stenosis. C. Tricuspid regurge. D. Tricuspid stenosis. So I'll let you answer the question, and then I'll explain in five seconds. Okay, so the answer is going to be tricuspid regurge. So it's going to be C. So in this case, essentially what's happening is you have the tricuspid valve. So this is as if you're looking at the heart straight on. So this is going to be the left side and this is going to be the right side with the inferior and superior vena cavas. And so this is going to be the tricuspid valve since it's on the right side. And going, this is going to be the mitral valve. So this is the tricuspid. And so tricuspid regurgitation just means that when the heart contracts, blood is going to shoot up through the tricuspid valve. So logically following that, it's going to go up through the superior vena cava, and that's how you get JVD, so jugular venous distension. And so just following that, so the thing is, if you have a blockage, right, or you're having more blood where it shouldn't be at the wrong time, is typically the tricuspid valve should be completely closed so that blood doesn't leak back into the right atrium. So if you have a blockage, essentially a traffic jam, it's going to go all the way back from the point that was a problem. So if this is the point of contention, then it's going to flood this area. So that's why you get JVD. And if it's very severe, then it's going to keep going. And since these veins lead into the liver, you can get hepatomegaly, which just means very large liver. And so just talking a little bit about the other ones. So we have tricuspid stenosis. It's not this one because this one would be a diastolic murmur because when it's stenosed, it just means that the valve area is going to be smaller. So a smaller amount of blood comes in when it's filling from the right atrium into the right ventricle. So this is going to be a diastolic murmur since it's filling in when the ventricle is relaxed. And in this case, this problem stem said that it was a pan-systolic. And so next one is going to be mitral stenosis. So once again, this is going to be a stenosis, so just a narrowing of the valve, and that's going to be a diastolic murmur. And so in this case, since it's on the left side of the heart, it's going to cause pulmonary hypertension. So once again, if this is the problem area, it's going to go into the left atrium, and then the left atrium connects to the um, the lungs. And so if this is the problem, then the blockage is going to go into the left atrium. You can get uh, enlargement of the left atrium, which can actually be seen on the EKG with the notched P waves, actually. And then you can also get pulmonary hypertension since this uh, blood is going to flow into the pulmonary vessels. And so next we have the pul we have pulmonary stenosis. So in this case, we have the right atrium here, right ventricle, and then it's going to go into the uh, pulmonary um, val pulmonic valve and then into the lungs. And so for this one, it's actually going to be a systolic crescendo decrescendo. So crescendo meaning it's going to go up and then it's going to go down. And so it's going to be between S1 and S2, but once again, the problem with this one, it's specifically a crescendo decrescendo, and they would have to tell you that versus the pan systolic that they described in the problem. And so for this question, essentially knowing which murmurs are systolic versus diastolic helps you rule out a lot. So anything that's stenosis, so for example, a tricuspid and pulmonic stenosis, I'm sorry, mitral stenosis and tricuspid stenosis, so left and right valves, they're going to be diastolic murmurs since you since it's going to be filling through the, the narrowed valve during diastole versus pulmonic stenosis is going to be during uh, systole where you have the ventricle tract. And so that blood flow is going to go through the pulmonic valve. That's why this stenosis is different from these two. And so this one's systolic, this one's diastolic, this one's diastolic. 
And so this one is going to be systolic and specifically it's going to be pansystolic. And then once again, after that, it, this can be a clue having JVD, right? So JVP, jugular venous pressure is elevated, therefore jugular venous distension is seen. And so just noting about this, so generally the normal is between six to eight, but in this case, it's 11, so it's clearly elevated. And so just talking about the, uh, the pathophysiology once again, if you have a, a problem here, it's going to go back up into the SV, uh, the superior vena cava, it's going to cause jugular venous distension, and it's also going to go back down the inferior vena cava and cause hepatomegaly. So I hope that helped, and thanks for watching.